Why didn't you say anything? You were praying so fervently, I didn't want to interrupt. I appreciate the sentiment, but I wasn't praying. No? What then? I was just thinking about the goddess. Were you now? Fascinating. Please, go on. Not here. Let's go somewhere else. So, you were pondering the existence of the goddess then? Yes. All right, consider this. The archives here have all kinds of texts about the goddess, right? But when people tell stories of the goddess, it's only myths and legends that glorify her. They probably hope to rake in more followers by glorifying the goddess as much as possible. That would be why the church tends to quietly shove all of their more questionable records under some secret rug somewhere. C claude don't put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. I was just wondering what the goddess looks like. That's the kind of thing I like to think about. What the goddess looks like? Well, I suppose if she really exists, she probably looks a lot like us. In fact, she probably wouldn't be so different from that old woman working here in the dining hall. What, Claude? Please stop. The goddess I imagine is absolutely beautiful. How rude of you, Ignatz. I'm sure that old woman was lovely back in her day. Ah, so I see. If one were to combine this incantation method with the power of a crest, then in theory, it should... Hey there. Still studying, are we? Isn't it past your bedtime? Claude, I really don't appreciate you interrupting me right now. Uh, but if you don't get your sleep, you're never gonna grow big and strong. Uh-huh. The last thing I need is you fretting over me as though I'm some child. I'm only a few years younger than you, you know. Hardly worth noting. Furthermore, my grades in magic and basically every other subject are far higher than yours. Whoa there. I'm not trying to treat you like a child, I promise. This is me treating you like... like a princess. Now, come along, princess. Brush your teeth and get yourself ready for bed. I could read you a story, if that helps. Ugh, oh, the audacity. Whatever it is you think you're treating me like, it's unendingly annoying. If a child and a princess are out, what's left? Should I treat you as a noble hero? Draw your sword, Lysithia. If you wish to continue studying, you must first defeat me in battle. Come now, face me like the hero of legend that you are. I find myself speechless in the wake of your staggering ignorance. Now, please, leave me be. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. But in all seriousness, you shouldn't neglect your sleep. You'll fall ill if you push yourself too hard. Oh, and just so you know, I heard a rumor that this library is haunted. <gasps> it's probably not true, right? Right. Anyhow, I'm off to bed. Good night. You know, I am suddenly rather sleepy. Excuse me while I see myself out. <laughs> no matter how she tries to hide it, she's still a young girl at heart. Um. Hmm. Um, Claude? Hmm? Oh, Marianne. Have the gods taken pity on my lost soul and revealed a sign to me? I've been researching the ten elites of Fodlan, but I can't tell fact from fiction. Anyhow, what can I help you with? Well, um, I found this pendant, and I think it's yours. Ah, right you are. Yeah, honestly, I'd resign myself to never seeing it again. It's a keepsake from my uncle, who has passed on. If I truly lost it, my grandfather would have had my head. Thanks for returning it to me, Marianne. You saved my tale. 
Please, it was nothing. I should be... No, I think that's enough researching for today. Why don't you join me for a nice chat? I just came to deliver the pendant. Sounds awfully lonely to only talk to those whom you have business with. Do you really dislike talking to people that much? It's just... I never know what to say. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. We'll figure it out as we go. Tell me, are you like this with your father too? Within the Alliance, Margrave Edmund is prone to debate. With a father like that, I would have thought... Margrave Edmund is my adoptive father. Oh, is he? I didn't know. Where were you born? That is none of your concern. I, um, I really must be going. She's hiding something, that much is clear. Ah, but that just makes me all the more desperate to know her secrets. Huh? Are you actually reading, Hilda? I thought you hated studying. Oh, hush. It's just a letter from my brother. He sends them all the time. Your brother, huh? Isn't he known as a great general of the Alliance? A true beacon of... Don't even start. That's got nothing to do with me. Uh-oh. Better not let your brother hear you say that. It would break his fraternal heart. But all joking aside, it sounds like he really cares for you. You can say that again. He must be rather bored, too, now that the situation in Elmira has settled down. Ah, the Elmirans, the Eastern Menace, as they're often called. I did hear your brother had fought them a number of times. In fact, I hear he's even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nadir, the great Elmiran warrior. Nadir, the undefeated, was it? Just another grizzled old man, as far as I'm concerned. But my father was ecstatic when he heard my brother had defeated him. He paraded my brother all over our territory. What a pain that must have been for our people. A pain? Any celebration is something to be enjoyed. Celebration puts smiles on faces faster than anything. I'm sure even you at least congratulated him, right? A smile from you would surely mean the world to your brother. Well, sure. Then he got all worked up and started saying things like, I am the protector of Fodlin. That's not far from the truth, you know. Why do you think the Almirans have been so quiet lately? They're wary of your brother. If House Goneril of the Border were a bunch of weaklings, the Almirans would have invaded Fodlin a long time ago. You talk about it as though you've spoken to the Almirans yourself. Well, I am heir to the leading house of the Alliance. I'm privy to all kinds of information, whether I like it or not. <laughs> you act so nonchalant about your studies, but you know so much about politics and history. You're a hard guy to grasp, you know that, Claude? Oh, I disagree. I'd let you grasp me any day. My hand, my heart, even my neck. But if you want to know all of my secrets, you'll have to bear yours as well. Is the water supposed to be this cold? God, my head slipped again. What's that noise? What are you doing? Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Another fine mess I've gotten myself into. What happened, Claude? You're soaked. The student whose turn it was to do the dishes today was ill, so I volunteered to take his place. The dining hall lady was on my case the whole time for breaking plates and getting water everywhere. Actually, not everywhere. Mostly on myself. It was just one big mess. It wore me right out, too. I could really use a nap about now. <laughs> you might be a noble with a fancy bloodline, but you sure don't act the part. Being noble or common doesn't have anything to do with washing dishes. Oh, I dare say most nobles would refuse to do it. But hey, I prefer it your way. You don't act like you're better than everyone. <laughs> I'm honored that you acknowledge my greatness. And I'm rather fond of your blunt way of praising a person's strengths, too. Really? To be honest, I don't actually trust my own ability to read people. I like to look for the good in them, but that doesn't always mean it's really there. I mean, you seem like a good person, but your heart could be black for all I know. 
You say you can't figure people out, but what you said just now was pretty shrewd. It's wise not to trust appearances alone. I'll keep that in mind. Though, I'm not sure I should be taking advice from someone covered in dish suds. <laughs> oh. yeah, I see your point. This looks like an ideal place to take a nap. Only one way to know for sure. Ah, and there's a nice breeze today, too. Claude? Huh? Why are you taking a sleep on the ground, Claude? Is that Petra? Where are you? Were you up in that tree the whole time? I couldn't feel your presence at all. Amazing. It is safe to take sleep in the tree's top. Why would you choose the dangerous ground instead? Your logic is sound, I'll give you that. But how is one supposed to get up there without losing the sleepies from the effort? I do not know what is meant by the sleepies, but getting in the tree's top is easy. And you will be using all of your energy, so that good sleep will find you up in the tree. I see. That makes a certain kind of sense. But it's not as relaxing as a good ground sleep. Give it some trying, and do not think with too much hardness when you return to the ground. Feel it. If you stop for thinking, your arms will get heavy. That is way more thought than I'd hoped to give this nap of mine. But I'm not one to give up before even trying. There goes nothing. I... I can do this! I have not known a noble here who can climb trees. Is this a weakness of Fodland nobles? No, not a weakness. I just... how do I... Ah! You should be quitting. It is a danger to be falling from such a height. Oh, I, I think that's enough for today. This might sound like an excuse, but we don't have a lot of tall trees where I grew up. This is all new to me. You should take your sleep on the ground. I will take mine in the tree. Uh, you won that round, tree. Ignatz, let us take a short break. I will pour tea. Please choose a teapot for us to use. You want me to pick one? I don't see any other Ignatz around here, do you? Go on now, we're wasting time. The pots are over here. I will leave the selection to your judgment. Ah, uh, let's see. How about this? That's rather plain. Why did you choose that one? The tea you chose has a very subtle taste, as well as a smooth, light texture. Such an unassuming tea calls for an unassuming pot, and one that complements the tea's color. In addition, the pot I selected has a floral design. Although we can't go for a walk today, we can still bask a little in nature's beauty. Very interesting. You know, you have an absolutely marvelous aesthetic eye. Precisely what I would expect from the son of a merchant house that has enjoyed the Gloucester's patronage for so many years. After we graduate, when you begin your trade in earnest, I will introduce you to my father. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I'm afraid I'm already on the path to becoming a knight. Ah, right, you are a second son. Still, your eye for beauty is a talent that should not go to waste. Very well. If you are to be a knight, then I shall happily take you into my service. Ah, well... Hmm... What, does that displease you? Not at all. I just need a little time to think it over. His eye for the arts is unwavering, but in all other matters he is woefully indecisive. Hello, Hilda. Are you training too? If that's the case, I may have to revise my opinion of you. Increased strength and skill would serve as perfect complements to your beauty and esteemed lineage. Um, no, I just left something here. I don't share your tireless work ethic. 
You're quite something. I don't think I've ever seen you take a break. When the fate of all the Alliance rests on your shoulders, the rigors of training seem paltry by comparison. Besides, when my admirers see that even an individual of my talent possesses a diligent work ethic, it is sure to inspire them. I see, but I was wondering... <laughs> Never mind, you're clearly busy. Oh, is there something you require? What do you need? There is nothing I cannot handle. Well, the trouble is, I'm no good at fighting. I'm a fragile young lady, not a fearsome warrior. I didn't even want to join the Academy, honestly. My brother made me. Of course. For a delicate flower such as yourself, no doubt battle must present a terrible hardship. <laughs> it does. It truly does. So, I was wondering if, in the next training session, you'd do my fighting for me? I mean, I can put on a tough, I'm actually fighting kind of air, but that's not quite enough on its own. Please, leave all of the difficulty to me. I shall permit no harm to befall you. Ah, I'm so happy. In that case, I'll focus on giving a convincingly soldierly performance. You know, Lawrence, you're a good guy. Not that I'd have expected anything less from a noble. With each of your foes that I vanquish, I shall only become ever stronger. Yes, leave it all to me. <laughs> what a guy. And all I had to do was ask. Hmm, maybe I'll have a snack. <laughs> Hey, Lawrence, got a minute? Certainly. I trust you're well? Doing great. I found a load of old weapons, just got done hauling them out of storage. Old weapons, you say? If there are any interesting swords in there, I would love to see them. They might only be good for training, but with a little care, who knows? Here, have some oil. And, uh, why exactly are you giving this to me? Like I said, they need a little care. With a bit of maintenance, some of these will really shine. Yes, I heard you. So why did you give me the oil? It's for polishing, Lawrence. Don't tell me you've never polished a weapon before. But that is hardly a task befitting someone of my station. If you had an exquisite blade, something of real historical significance to complement my noble heritage, that would be another matter. In that case, appraise while you polish, you're bound to find something good working through these. This seems as fine an occasion as any to air my grievances. I am a highborn noble. As such, it is my sworn duty to protect the common folk. I have no time for trivialities. What's more, you seem to be under the misapprehension that you can order me about. Please think carefully about how you speak to me. I'm not ordering you around. And I'm not talking to you as a noble, either. I'm asking you to help me with this. As a friend. I am your friend, but I am also a noble. Those two qualities are not mutually exclusive. Oh, good. Let's get to it then, buddy. I just wanted to say that I've been watching and I'm really impressed by how hard you work very dedicated for someone so young. Oh, um, thank you. I really admire your everything. But you know, everybody needs to relax now and then. I was wondering if maybe you and me could... Uh, I'm quite busy. I should get going. Bye. That was difficult to watch. Lawrence, ever since you started hanging around, I've had no luck. Usually, if I show a girl I'm mature, noble, and interested, she's an easy catch. Your logic is sound, I will admit, but your results are less than entirely convincing. Honestly, all this talk of maturity and experience from a shallow person like you is rather laughable. Shallow? What? Like your nobleness is some properly cultured man of the world? Naturally, my bearing is as elegant and refined as silk. Observe. You seem to be deep in thought. Is there something on your mind? 
Please, allow me to lend you my ear. I will gladly shoulder any of your burdens. Oh, thank you. But it's not something I really want to talk about. So harsh. Even the slightest worry, I would have been happy to listen. <laughs> Why, yes. Your silky bearing was quite impressive. You're always going on about nobility, but that's no way to win a woman. Your problem, and I may have told you this before, at least twice, your problem is you're pretentious. <laughs> that's rich coming from you. Your bearing is so flippant that you utterly fail to gain a lady's trust. How can you not see that? All I'm failing to see is you getting a girl's attention. How dare you? Ah, uh, listen, I'm sorry, that was mean. And you're probably right about me not being serious enough. <sighs> I will concede, I feel the same. Enough at least to keep your advice at the back of my mind. I was a touch too stubborn. It's the same in battle, isn't it? If you don't bend a little, you fail. Even so? Yeah, with that being said... I will outclass you, Sylvain. Bring it on, Lawrence. Right. Then this goes here. Hello, Raphael. What exactly are you doing with that piece of wood? Hey, Hilda. I'm just doing this. With your bare hands. Impressive that just the outer ring is left. It makes quite a nice circle. Yeah. I just gotta polish it up and paint it. Then the base of the necklace will be ready. Sorry, did you say necklace? How's it look? I bet it's the right size, too. And this tree bark smells amazing. Now I just need to carve these boar tusks to hang from it. Boar tusks? I almost forgot. I was going to add these wolf claws, too. And I could even add some color to them. And wolf claws? Huh? Is something wrong, Hilda? That necklace! It has a certain, uh, rustic charm? You're right. It really does. Want me to make you one while I'm at it? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Besides, I think it would look better on you than on me. <laughs> it would definitely look good on me. But this one's actually a birthday present for my little sis. For your sister? I mean, uh... uh don't you think she might like something more feminine? Something cute? Something cute? What's wrong with something tough and rugged? This necklace is gonna have tusks and claws and stuff. But girls don't usually go for tusks and claws and stuff. There should be flowers or gems or... Here, I, I can talk you through it. If you're making a necklace for your sister, you might try putting a pretty little flower in a small crystal bottle and sealing it with resin. If you say so. But where would I find a flower that was pretty enough? Oh, honestly, I don't know much about flowers. But, hmm, now that I think about it, I remember hearing about a splendid flower that only blooms near Fodlin's throat. Fodlin's throat? That's on the eastern edge of the Alliance. I'd have to leave now if I'm going to make it back in time. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like a bit of a stretch. Okay, let me think. Um, where'd he go? Well, no matter. Hey, Leone. Are you just getting back? Whoa, what's with the bag? It's huge! Oh, this? <laughs> I thought I'd get all my chores done at once. Guess it got a little out of hand. Sorry to be a pain, but could you help me out? I'm happy to help. Where'd you go to get all this stuff? Well, first it was just the cloth scraps from the tailor, and then it was the used oil from a restaurant in town. After that, it was the books the scholars didn't know what to do with. I mean, that was just on the way. Whoa, it sounds like you did a lot of running around today. It wasn't so bad. I just figured it would save time if I did it all in one trip. You planned all that out? 
Impressive! What are you gonna do with all that stuff you got? The scraps will be good for dishcloths, and I can make soap from the oil. The books are just to help with my studies. You really can't let anything go to waste, can you? Nope. Can't stand the idea. Who knew you were so thoughtful? I mean, with actual thinking ahead. You're so generous to everyone, and always making me food. I never knew how much thought you must put into it. I cook to relax, and it's nice seeing how enthusiastic you get about eating what I make. Whatever I give away is just the stuff that isn't useful to me. I pick up all sorts of things when I'm in town. Giving things like that to people who need them or who can actually use them makes sure they aren't wasted. That makes sense. You've got to use up the stuff you've got, after all. Hey, do you think you're like this because you didn't have much growing up? <laughs> I guess times were tough now that you mention it. The folks in my village definitely aren't rich. My dad had to go through a lot of trouble to get the recommendations I needed to attend the academy. That doesn't mean I've grown up to be stingy. It just means I don't like to squander. Anyway, enough of that. It's in poor taste to go on about your own hardships. I've always got time for a meal with a friend, and it so happens I picked up some choice meat today. Why don't we share it? Now you're speaking my language. Gaspar, good to see you. You're looking a bit bigger lately. Yeah, Raphael, that's one way to put it. Is something wrong? I thought you wanted to get bigger. Have you been training? I haven't missed a day. The problem is that my body doesn't want to grow in the directions I want it to. I was hoping to get a little taller, but I seem to just be growing wider. I don't think your methods are for me. Oh, that's too bad. I always thought the secret to getting bigger was lots of eating and training. You know what? You shouldn't worry so much about how big or tall you are. You're great, no matter what size. What makes you say that? Well, let's see. You can run faster than me, and you're really agile, which I'll never be. That's just about your legs, though. Your other movements are quick, too. You can dodge good and swing a sword pretty fast. Oh, and you're... All right, Raphael. I think I see the problem now. I thought I envied the size of your body, but I was wrong. After hearing you say those nice things about me, I realized that I actually envy the size of your heart. Huh? I think it's normal size, but... That's right! I don't just need a bigger body, I need a bigger heart! Once I have a bigger heart, then maybe, just maybe, my body will start growing too. Yeah, maybe! Now how do I increase the size of my heart? It didn't help with my body, but do you think eating will make my heart grow? I have no idea, but I'm always up for a meal. I really don't want to get any wider, though. I'm so conflicted. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. It's like you always say, when in doubt, go to the dining hall. <laughs> Good morning, Lysithia. Out for a stroll, are we? It's lovely weather for it. I might go wander outside myself. I'm sure I can see some beautiful sights. Ignatz, hold still, will you? Uh, sure. Your shoes are untied. It looks sloppy. Let me just fix it for you. Oh, thank you for letting me know. But really, I'm perfectly capable of tying them myself. <laughs> Clearly, that's not the case. Otherwise, this wouldn't be an issue. Now, hush. Um... There we go. Thanks. You've also got awful bedhead. What? But I examined myself in the mirror before leaving my quarters. It's the back of your head. Quite unkempt. You really should get it together. I mean, really. You're born to a noble adjacent merchant family, aren't you? You really should be more presentable. Sorry, Lysithia. You're always so perfectly put together. In fact, I'd say you're perfect in all respects. I don't think I've seen you fail at anything. Well, consider that if I make even the slightest misstep, everyone will treat me like a child. There's nothing I hate more than that. I see. Well, I think you're very mature. 
If anything, you may be overdoing it somewhat. I mean, people treat me like a child sometimes. But I like it, because it reminds me that other people care about me. You know? No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. Ignatz, are you really lecturing me about how I conduct myself right now? You're a sheepish, unreliable scatterbrain who can only ever think about what others think of him. Perhaps you should worry about your own maturity before you start questioning mine. Although you certainly look the part of a baby, so maybe that's asking too much. Anyway, I've got things to do, so I'm gonna go now. Uh, Lysithia, wait. Hey! Out of my way. You're such a child, I swear. Oh, that was uncalled for. After all, I am older than she is. <laughs> Is that everything? Yes, that's the last of them. Thank you, Marianne. Just when I thought all the laundry was dry, the wind got stronger, and... By the time I realized what was happening, there were clothes dancing across the sky. That must have been frustrating to watch. I didn't imagine they would float all the way to the stables. Thanks again for helping me pick them up. It was no trouble. They landed right at my feet. Well, now I can hang it all back up before sunset. Everything should be dry by the day's end. All right, I should get to... Uh, ah! Are you all right? <laughs> uh-huh. The hamper's just a little heavier than it looks. Do you think you could give me a hand? Whew, we got here just in time. Thanks for the help hanging everything up. It was nothing. Huh. What is it? I'm sorry. I know I'm not much fun to be around. I'm not very good at small talk either. Oh no, that's all right. After all, just look over there. Huh? Oh, the flowers are lovely. They were mere buds until just the other day. Now look at those gorgeous blooms. How wonderful. If we'd been chatting away, we might never have noticed them. Sure, the laundry was an ordeal, but at least there was a silver lining. Keep you waiting. Ready to start cleaning? No, that's all right. Actually, I'm just finishing up. Oh, it's true. Look how tidy everything is. You've done such a marvelous job. I'm glad I didn't get in your way. <laughs> Thank you very much. So anyway, you can go now. Hmm? You were talking to your friend, right? I just have some things to put away. It's okay. I can manage without you. I thought I saw someone earlier. That was you, wasn't it? You know, I'd have been willing to help. You could have just said, hey, let's go and clean. It's all right. You were having a conversation. I didn't want to sneak up like I was eavesdropping. And really, I didn't need help. Oh, Ignatz, you darling. You're so considerate. Thank you so very much. Glad to be of service. I'll start putting all this away. Not so fast. W what's the matter? Aren't you overdoing it? Don't you think you might be taking on too much, hmm? Oh, uh, I didn't expect to hear that from you. Let me give you some advice. It's true that I like to delegate as many tasks as I possibly can, but when someone helps me, I make sure to lavish them with praise as a reward for their hard work. So, then we come out even. On the other hand, look what almost happened just now. 
You did all that work for me, and I almost missed it. Now, where would that leave you? With no praise, no thanks. You'd be losing out. Um, personally, I'd prefer to lose out rather than inconvenience someone else. For instance, I'd have felt terrible for intruding on your important conversation earlier. Consider the negligible loss to me versus the major inconvenience to you. Personal loss is always going to be the better choice. Right? Huh. Well, if that's how you feel, then I'm not sure how to convince you otherwise. <laughs> Oh, Professor, here's the map you... Well, it's always next time, I suppose. Hey, Ignatz, didn't you have something to talk to the Professor about? Oh, no, nothing urgent. You didn't cut short your conversation because of me, did you? Come on, do I seem like the type to do that? No, I just had a couple of questions about the bows. We're done now, so I thought I'd come and tell you. The bows? Is something wrong with them? Lots of them have come in for repairs lately, so I switched out some of the strings for stronger ones. They've been breaking less, but now they're harder to draw. Ah, I see. I suppose people would prefer if you went back to the lighter bow strings. Maybe. If the only issue was the draw weight, I'd just tell people to get stronger arms. But the real problem is that you can't shoot as fast. The arrows also fly too far now. I can see how slower shooting is a drawback, but the arrows flying farther... That actually sounds like a good thing. Sure, on open plains, but up close you lose accuracy. That's why I thought it might be good to use different bowstrings for different scenarios. I wanted the professor's opinion about that. Oh, good point. You know a lot about bows, don't you? Guess I do. I grew up in a hunting village, so I've been around them my whole life. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily better than anyone, but at least I know what I'm doing. And you? Do you have something you're really good at? <laughs> Me? Oh, no. I, I don't think so. Well, I'm sure you'll find your thing someday. I hope so. Ah! Ah! Out! Out! Oh, my glasses! Where are they? Where are they? Please take my apologies, Ignatz. I did not have enough care. That's okay, Petra. Just... Have you seen my glasses? Glasses? Ah, uh, yes! Transparent lenses for viewing things. Yes, exactly, yes. Hmm... Your face looks different without the glasses. Ah, well, I dropped them. That's why I'm looking for them. Are these them? Oh, thank the goddess. I thought I might be in trouble there. Are you okay, Petra? You're not hurt? I have no wounds. And you? I'm okay too. Thank you. That is goodness. How long have you needed the lenses anyway? Hmm? Oh, ages. I can't see without them. You've never used glasses, I gather. I guess you don't need them. In Bridget, glasses are not existing. I think all of our eyes must be good there. I kind of figured. <laughs> I'm a little jealous, to tell the truth. Inside the shadows, dangerous beasts are lurking. If you cannot see, you cannot live. So bad eyesight means death? Bridget sounds scary. You need to have sight for hunting, too. If not... You will starve until death. Oh, yeah. Lots of hunting in Bridget, right? I guess that requires good eyesight. I wonder why eyes would change and need lenses. Cynthia, you're really pale. Yeah, I've been feeling really queasy all morning. I'm just heading back to my quarters to rest. K 
Can you even make it there in that state? Here, climb on my back. I'll carry you. What? What? No. No. I'm not some sort of... infant. Always worried about looking like a kid. No time for that now. Just get on. <sighs> I'm feeling a bit better now. I should be okay from here. Thank you so much, Leone. I hope I wasn't too heavy. Was I? <laughs> no, not at all. I actually made for a fun bit of training. Uh, training? Yeah. Carrying someone around is good for the legs. You're just the right weight for it, too. I might ask you to help me train again sometime. Anything can be a kind of training with the right attitude, you know? Are you always thinking about training? Well, I can't devote all my time purely to training. So it's more efficient if I can train while I get other stuff done at the same time. Wouldn't that actually be rather inefficient? Huh? What do you mean? Well, for example, if you're training for endurance, it seems running would be a better approach. If you're only ever training by cramming it in with other tasks, you won't be getting the best results. I'm no expert on the subject, but even I can logic that one out. Come to think of it, you do always seem to stick to a pretty rigid schedule, don't you? I've noticed that you focus completely on whatever it is you've set out to do. Then you switch to something else and focus completely on that. You've noticed, have you? Now that I think about it, you may be right. Maybe that is the more efficient way to do things. Hey, you're really bright, Lysithia. Thanks so much for the helpful advice. That was sweet of Leone to check on me and carry me all the way to my quarters. And in the end, I just lectured her. She did thank me for it, but uh, I probably could have handled that better. Lysithia, I have to say, you're really impressive. I respect you a lot, and I thought I should tell you. Uh, okay? It's just, you know, you're four years younger than me, but you work really hard at everything. I mean, when I was your age, I wasted all my time just goofing off and doing whatever I wanted. Doesn't look like much has changed for you since then. And unlike you, I don't have time to waste, so leave me be. Are you going to do some extra magic training? I'd be happy to join you, if you don't mind. What do you want to start with? I am absolutely disinterested in spending any time with you. What is it you want anyway? Clearly, you haven't been listening to a word I've been saying. Perhaps it's because I'm younger, you see fit to ignore me when I speak. Is that it? What? No. He has nothing to do with it. You're amazing. You're true to yourself. You know what you want and who you are. Not a lot of girls I know can say that. Ah, so it isn't my age that's to blame for you breezing over my wishes. It's my gender. I... what? Where did you get that idea? I'm just trying to praise your smarts and hard work and everything. It's impressive how someone so young... Your lack of self-awareness is deeply troubling. What I'm aware of is you trying to pick a fight. Calm down, kiddo. Look, I'm really busy. Super, extremely, inordinately busy. I've got one last thing to say to you. And what would that be? I'm skilled with magic, and my abilities are finely honed. It's not like I need someone for target practice. No, but I do. Why do I have to clean the library? It looks like you're not busy. I was quite busy sampling pastries, I'll have you know. Sort books anyway. They're so bulky and heavy. It takes forever to lug them around. Right, Marianne? You agree with me, right? N no, I don't mind it. Oh, you like cleaning then? I will say you look like someone who'd be good at it. I 
Um, well... In that case, it's all yours. I'd only slow you down if I'm being honest. As I always say, if you want something done right, let someone else do it themselves. Um... Right, I'm off to run some errands. I'll leave all this in your capable hands. Uh. <sighs> hey, Marianne, are you...? Whoa, what happened? This place looks even worse than before. I didn't realize that was possible. I'm sorry, Hilda. I just didn't know the best way to organize the books while sorting. Oh, well, no way around it, I suppose. I'll show you how it's done. First, you have to decide where you'll put each topic. Then, all of the books that don't match that topic, remove them from the section. When you remove them, you need a temporary place to put them. Let's put books on magic here, books on swordsmanship here. Once you've done that, you just put the books back in their sections, like so. Wow, Hilda, that was incredible. Yeah, yeah, what kind praise. Looks like in the end, I'm doing this whole thing on my own, hmm? Sorry, the least I can do is help you put them back on the shelf. <laughs> Hello, Marianne. All done for the day. Oh, Sylvain. Yes, I was just heading back to my quarters. Well then, my timing couldn't be better. I was just heading into town and I thought, maybe you'd like to join me? Um, I don't think I should. I heard a story once about a beautiful maiden who was locked up in a monastery day and night. She was held prisoner by her own fear of the outside world. Then a brave knight set the girl free and took her to town where they drank tea and talked for hours. So, my fair maiden? Please, you should not waste your time on me. Besides, my adoptive father requested that I not stray too far from the monastery. Margrave Edmund wants to keep you locked up, huh? I've heard he's... Uh, let's call it ambitious. Well, just tell him who I am. I think he'd approve. I'm heir to House Gautier, one of the most prominent families in the kingdom. I've got a crest, I've got money, and I'm stunningly handsome. What's that face for, Marianne? Was it the handsome thing? I can see how that might have been a bit much. I... I don't really know you all that well, but I don't think it makes a difference. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me that you have a crest. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean you should find my crest impressive. I meant your family would, and... You know what? Maybe I should start over. If you're going into town, please just go without me. Oh, okay. I've got to get going anyway. Places to be, you know. <laughs> well, this is me going. But remember, should you ever need me, I will forever be your knight, my maiden. I wonder what he meant by that. Good at all. Ugh, why did he have to punch me so hard? Hey, Caspar, something the matter? Oh, uh, hi, Hilda. Yeah, I just got in a little fight. No big deal. Definitely won. Your face is all swollen. That looks painful. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. No, no, that's really too much. Like, like I said, I'm fine. Don't argue, just come along. You look ghoulish. Huh? Maybe it's worse than I thought. Oh, whatever. It can't hurt to have it looked at. There! That should do it. You'll be all right now. Great! Thanks, Hilda. I had no idea you were so good at this. I always tended to my big brother's wounds, so I have lots of experience. I'm curious, though. Why are you always getting into fights? You really got hurt. Surely it would have been better not to bother. It's not like I go looking for fights, and I'm not always the one who starts them. 
there are just a lot of guys in this world who won't listen to reason. Somebody's got to beat some sense into them. Hmm. So that's why you're always picking fights. Why not ignore them or ask someone else for help? Maybe that's how you'd handle it, but I can't just look the other way. How very gallant. But maybe you should try showing a little restraint. You really think that? Yes, I do. I don't think you can solve all your problems by throwing a few punches. The world's a big place. At this moment, all over Fogland, countless people are in some kind of trouble. But they'll figure things out one way or another, even without you there. Try to hold back and see what happens. Maybe you'll be surprised. Besides, if you're always picking fights, you might get so badly injured that you can't protect me. Now that's a good point right there. I guess I could give this whole restraint thing a shot. Hey there, Hilda. You're looking cute today. Thanks. You're looking quite handsome yourself. You know exactly how to talk to a guy. I like it. What's with all the books? Oh, these? I was just bringing them to... Uh, ouch! Ouch! What's wrong? Did you hurt your foot? Uh, yeah, I tripped earlier. But I'm supposed to return these books to the library by the end of the day. Relax. I'm sure there's a handsome guy around here who knows how to carry books to the library. You rest your foot. I'll take care of this. Oh, no, that's all right. You must have something more important to do. Nothing is more important than helping you. Just pile the books on that desk, and I'll get them where they're going. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so, so much. It's nothing. I'm happy to... Wow. That is a lot of books. I'll just leave them right here for you. Thanks again, Sylvain. You're the best. Wait a minute. Some of these books have dust on them. She's been holding on to these for months. The professor was looking for this one a few weeks ago. Hilda... Hang on. Did she just trick me into doing something she didn't want to do? Gorgeous. You're looking lovely today. Join me on a stroll around town. Aw, is a sweet girl like you doing all this hard work by yourself? That's no good. Allow me to help. Hi. Oh, hey, Leonie. Sorry, but I'm kind of in a hurry right now. Hey! Hey! Get back here! Whoa, no need to yell. Do you need something? You chat up all the girls like that, don't you? What a terrible thing to say. I see a girl. I figure it would be rude just to pass her by without at least a wink or a nice word. But you knew that. So I'm going to get going now. See you, Leone. Wait, now hold on. How come it's not rude for you to just pass me by? Me? Pass who now? Look at me. I'm a girl, you know. Uh... Oh, I see. A girl. You're a girl. Huh. Sorry. I know it's true in theory, but it looks like my brain just didn't want to accept it. But you're correct. You are a beautiful girl in your own right. Yes, that is a statement with which I agree. I am ever so terribly sorry for being so rude, my lady. How can I ever make this up to you? Yeah, uh, hang on, back up. Don't get the wrong idea. Seriously, I feel just dreadful about how I acted. This is the first time I've done anything like this. It's shocking that I'm capable of such low behavior. Even if you are a somewhat crude, I mean, spirited girl, that doesn't excuse my... What did you just call me? R right, of course. I'm sorry. I can't believe I was so thoughtless. Hey! Acting pitiful won't get you anywhere. I won't just forget about this, you know. Hey. 